Hey, what's up everybody? Brian here with the J-Line Church, where we love God, love people, and live life Jesus style. J-Line means direct line to Jesus, and we hope you get that today. We are talking about love. But before we get into that, if you'd like to know more about the J-Line Church, go to jline.org slash church so you can learn more about us and also see how to support us as we help others achieve greatness in every part of life. Now, let's talk about love. But before we go any further, let's clear one thing up when it comes to love. You are loved. You are worthy of love. And the Bible says that there is no love greater that one would lay down his life for his friend. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. So we are worthy of love. We're worthy to receive love. We're worthy to give love. And let me tell you, there's nothing that you can do to make him love you more. And there's nothing that you can do or have done to make him love you less. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. All right, well, let's talk about love, and I just want to break it down. What is the message that we're talking about today? This is the message. I think people have a love for trust that they need to trade in for a love for truth. Loving trust and loving truth are two different things, and in fact, I think a lot of people, especially in the last couple of years, have been loving trust. Let me talk about what trust is, and then I want to talk about what truth is really quick. So I have it right here. Trust is a reliance on integrity or a belief in someone or something. Like I'm putting trust or putting faith in something or someone. Now that's totally different than truth because truth is reality or something that's actual Okay, so when it comes to, you might say, well, I trusted that I was being told the truth, right? Well, if you fall in love with trust, then you are going to fall towards, I just want to trust, I just want to believe, I want to believe the best, I want to, I want to hope and have put my reliance in what I'm being told is the truth, and I trust it. And if you value trust over truth, then you'll probably go and enter into life with like not really questioning things or not really um, just just blind faith, just like really it's like a blind leading the blind. Like I hope that this is right. I hope, I trust that this is right. But did you know that truth or having a love for truth is actually questioning things? It's actually finding out, okay, hey, what is accurate here? And so then we seek the truth and in order to seek the truth, sometimes you have to hold trust loosely. And so think about this. I want to trust. Trust is a good thing. But if I'm going to trust, I need to trust in the reliance of not the person or the thing or the subject or the topic. I need to put my reliance and my trust in the truth. And in order to know the truth, I need to seek the truth, okay? The simple challenge is this. Can we and will we lay down our love for trust and hold tight to love for truth? Let's read it here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 24. It says, never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. And don't be one who scorns prophecies, but be faithful to examine them and put them to the test. And afterward, listen to this, hold tightly to what is proven to be right. I want to stop right there and just say this. A lot of times it's very hard if you put your trust or your faith into something and it ended up not being true. Maybe perhaps you didn't test it, but it had been tested and it turned out that what you put your faith into or put your trust into turned out not to be true. Well, right here it says, put them to the test and afterwards, what do we do afterwards? We hold tightly to what is proven to be right. And now as faith, as we invite our faith and truth and faith in the truth, to come out. Let's fall in love with truth. Even though that truth not, might not be what we trusted to be true, now the truth comes out. Now the truth becomes revealed because we seek after the truth. We test things. And when we find out what the truth is, we hold tight to the truth. Oh man, that's some good stuff. And then it says this, 
Avoid every appearance of evil. Now may the God of peace and harmony set you apart and make you completely holy. This make you completely holy. What? I could be holy? Holy is, simply means set apart to God. And I'm, I'm, my prayer is that we, if we've been putting our trust in things that are not of God, that we would be set apart and that the truth that is of God would be set apart to make us set apart for God, set apart for holiness, set apart for righteousness, and that we would, really it says, uh, what does it say? Avoid every appearance of evil. If something's looking evil, feeling evil, seeming evil, I want to avoid that, but not only just to run from it, not, not, not talking about running from it or hiding from it. It's talking about, hey, if this is, if this is evil, I want to find out. I want this to be revealed to me that the Holy Father, the God of grace and harmony, the God of peace and harmony, and harmony is coming together. And so that the God of peace and harmony will set us apart in uh, completely holy. And it says, and may your entire being, your spirit, your soul, your body keep, be kept. It says your spirit, your soul, and your body be kept completely fall, flawless. Flaw, whoa, we could be kept completely flawless. And it says in the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, as the Lord comes and as the Lord appears to us, we can be completely flawless. Did you know when God looks at you and when God looks at me, he doesn't see our flaws. He doesn't see our mistakes. He doesn't see our failures. He doesn't see our imperfections. God looks at us through the lens and the love of Jesus Christ, who is perfect and who has set apart you and I, and he died for us to make us holy. So this means he's that we're worthy and that when God sees us, he sees us who were created and intended to be. And that is flawless, man, man. I'm, and I know right now you might be thinking, oh man, I can't think of myself like that. I can't think of myself like that. Why don't we fall in love with the truth and hold tight, hold tight to what the truth is instead of uh, uh, something else. All right. So this is the truth, man. And it says the anointed one, right? The anointed one, Jesus Christ, the one who calls you by name, the one that calls you by name, Jesus, he is, he says in John 14, six, I am the way, the truth and the life. He is the way he is the truth and he is the life. And it says the one that calls you by name is trustworthy. He's trustworthy. So what am I going to put my trust in? I'm going to put my trust in the truth. My trust in Jesus. I'm going to put my trust in, and it says he's trustworthy and will thoroughly, listen to this, he will thoroughly complete his work in you. He is going to thoroughly complete his work in you and in me. And although we may not trust that we are holy or we may not trust or see or believe that we are flawless, he's completing that work into us and, and he's completing that work for us. And he's completing, completing that work around us, in us. If we fall in love with truth, let's fall in love with truth. I want to invite you today to exchange trust that may have been broken, to exchange trust in something that you thought was one way, but it turned out to be another. Exchange your love for trust and exchange it so that you can hold tight to the truth. Before we go, if you'd like to rededicate your life, the past, the present, and the future to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, either for the first time or to simply rededicate your life and commit your life to him from this point forward to love God, love people, and live life Jesus style, let's pray these words. It's as simple as this. Just say, Jesus, I surrender my entire life to you. I give you my past my present, my future. I crown you king of yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for making me a new creation. Thank you for giving me your life and for sending your Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, 
to give me access to that same power that raised you from the dead. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. My eternal life begins right now. The old life is gone. The new life begins right now. Oh man. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me everything I need to live a godly life from this point forward. And thank you, Lord, for love and the love for you because you are the truth. Amen. Hey, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe to the J-Line Network so you can stay up to date on all things to keep your life great. Until next time, let's fall in love with truth. Amen.